but they're back in session. Parties and council are present. All members of our jury are alternates are present. Our witness, Ms. Garcia, is back on the witness stand. And uh, Ms. Rodriguez, you may continue your examination. When we left off, we were going through some of the checks, and I think the judge had asked you a question about the job names down in the corners. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the second page, these are some additional checks that were written um, that you received, 4127, 1103, 1106, and 1107. Mm -hmm. Do you recall looking at these in packet 420C? Uh, yes. And these, again, have a specific job name down on the memo line, correct? Yes. And then moving on to the next set, we have check numbers 4128, 4129, 4131, and 4132. Would these, again, be checks that were consistent with checks that you received from Joseph McStay? Yes. And again, we have specific jobs in the memo line, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then moving on to the next set, we have 4145, 4147, 4148, and then 1112. Are these also consistent with checks that you recall seeing from Joseph McStay? Yes. And then moving on to checks 41. 53, 4154, 4155, and 1116. Were these also checks that you recall seeing from Joseph McStay? Uh, yes. Now, you indicated that sometimes the defendant would bring in the checks, is that right? That's what I recall, yes. Okay, and then sometimes you would also receive checks that were in the mail? I believe so, yes. When a check came in, Whose responsibility was it to record it to the specific job that it was for? Mine. Now, at some point while you were working at Metro Sheet Metal, did you become aware of the fact that Joseph McStay and his family were missing? Yes. Do you recall when that was that you became aware of that? Um. I recall that we tried contacting him on a Friday and couldn't get in touch. I know Dave had some questions about a project. I don't know if it was money related or design related. I don't, I don't remember that. And I couldn't, we couldn't get in touch with him uh, by phone and he didn't respond by email. Let me, let me actually put a calendar up for you that okay. may help refresh your recollection of when that specific date was. So this would be on the bottom here. Would be the first week in February, starting with 31st of January. Into that first week, do you recall which date in looking at this calendar that was? I remember it was a Friday, so probably February 5th. February 5th, you mm -hmm. believe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will check in just one second. Give me a time so I can mark that down. So you believe you tried to contact him on the 5th? Correct. Okay. And so this would be People's Exhibit 567. And so was that you that specifically tried to contact Joe? Yes, okay, by so. phone and email. Okay. Okay, does that look accurate? Carmen Garcia attempted to contact Joe on the 5th? Joe being Joseph? Yes, I'll put Joe next day. Also yes, I forgot. Yes. Okay. okay. Does that look accurate to you? Yes. Okay. Now, you indicated that you had tried to reach him both via telephone and email. Is that right? Yes. Did you, um, you indicated your first phone call that you tried to reach him on was the 5th. Do you recall approximately 
what time of day it was that you tried to reach him? I would guess the morning, and by afternoon I was sending him an email. So I maybe a couple of times in the morning, and when that didn't work, email. Because he was usually pretty responsive. Okay, so typically in the past, if you contacted Joe via telephone, he would respond to you pretty quickly? Yeah, more or less. Okay, so you reached out to him. When you called him, do you recall if you were able to leave a message for him? I believe I... Hmm. I can't say. I can't recall, I should say. I believe I would have because um, we had all expectation that he would get back to us. We refresh your recollection to look at a portion of the report that you gave to the detective with respect to whether or not you left messages for him on that date? Phone messages, you mean? Yeah, you, because you indicated that you believe you did, but would it refresh your memory to look yes, at the report? It would. Showing her the transcript of her interview, page 17. 17? What? So eight number? 17. Okay, 17? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. Did that refresh your recollection of your conversation with the detective? Yes. Okay, and do you recall now after reviewing that if you were able to leave messages for Joseph when you first tried calling him? Yes. <laughs> bottom of page 17, the last two lines, and the top of page 18. You also indicated that you uh, had sent an email to him, is that right? Yes. Did you receive any response from Mr. McStay at all? No. Now, given that that message was on a Friday, do you recall if you saw the defendant that day? I didn't. I don't, I don't recall, but I don't believe so because well, I don't believe so. Why do you not believe so? Because when he came in on Monday, I asked him, or I told him that we'd been trying to contact Joseph, and we had been unable to, and what was going on. Okay, so... Monday, and looking at the next calendar, which would be Exhibit 568, Monday being the 8th, you indicated, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So Monday, February 8th, you saw the defendant, and can you tell us about that conversation with him? I just asked him, you know, that we, or just told him that we were trying to contact Joseph and that he hadn't gotten back to us and what was going on. And he asked me, well, why do you need to get in touch with him? And I said, Dave has questions about the, the unit that we were working on. Okay. Let me go ahead and mark that down on the calendar that you spoke with Chase, Chase on the 8th. Mm -hmm. appear to be correct to you that on the 8th, Carmen Garcia spoke with Chase regarding Joseph McStay? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, that's actually the state's testimony. She saw Mr. Merrick on that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So, you indicated that you talked to him about that and you told him that you were trying to get a hold of him. <coughs> Um, did he appear concerned at that time? No. Did you... He said he had been trying to get in touch with him as well over the weekend. Okay. Did it seem to you that he was more worried about something else? Did he ever express concern during that interview, or that time that you spoke with him? About him being uh, about available? Just, yes. Um, no, not really.
when you told him that you had been trying to get in touch with him regarding some issues that Dave had, what was his response? I don't recall. Did you ask him or talk to him about whether or not he had called any law enforcement about them missing? No, he said he hadn't. He was going to, I think he said he was going to wait a few days. You indicated that you don't recall exactly what the gist of the conversation was with the defendant when you had talked to them or what his response was about why you wanted to get a hold of uh, Joseph. Do you recall that? Right, he just reacted like, well, why do you need to get in touch with him? Why do you need to speak to him? Did he tell you what further actions he was going to take regarding that, if any? Regarding me trying to contact Joseph? Um, regarding Joseph being gone. I, well, he said he was just going to wait a few days, and then he was, uh, said, well, are you going to contact the family? And I think he said he was going to hold off on that, and he was going to go to the house and check it out himself. Did he tell you when he was going to go to the house? Mm -hmm. No, I think, no, and I can't remember specific. Would it refresh your recollection to look at a transcript of the interview that you gave with the detective? Please. Page 17, lines 6 through 9. So if you could review lines 6 through 9 to yourself. Okay. So he indicated to you he was going to go by the house later in the week? Mm -hmm. okay. At that point, you had tried calling uh, Joe on that Friday, and then you had emailed him. Did you continue trying to get a hold of Joseph after that? Uh, I think we kind of left it up to Chase to try to follow up on that. You testified that you had asked him um, about getting a hold of his family. Do you remember that? Yes. Now, did you have any contact information for Joseph McStay's family? No. Later I did, but not, not at that time. Okay. And in fact, at the time that Joe McStay went missing, had Metro Sheet Metal been working on any projects for Earth-inspired products? We had two projects still outstanding, if I recall. Did you continue to see Mr. Merritt at work that week um, after you had the conversation with him on the 8th? Yes. Did you follow up with him at all about um, if he had heard from Joseph McStay or the family? Um, I can't recall. Okay. Now, at some point, do you recall receiving a couple of checks around the time the McStay family met, went missing from the defendant? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 420D and 420F. If you can take a look at these, tell me if you recognize those checks. Yeah, that looks like the others. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> I'm going to put them actually on the overlay oh, okay. for you, okay? Starting first with check number 4236, which is exhibit 420D, do you recognize this? Yes, it looks similar to the other checks. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the checks that you received from the defendant? Yes. When you received this check, did you notice something different about it? I remember um, mentioning today that the, the signature looked different. Okay. And moving on to Exhibit 420F, do you recall if you received this check from the defendant at the same time as you received 
check number 4236. I believe so. I believe it was two checks. Okay. Now, both of these checks were written um, with a date of February 4th of 2010. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Do you recall when you actually received these checks? It would have been maybe Monday or Tuesday of the following week. Because if you look at the calendar next to you, February 4th, what day? Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you believe that you received those checks possibly on Friday the 5th? No, or no, no. It would be Monday. Monday? Yeah, because I don't, I don't recall seeing Chase on that Friday because that Monday is when I questioned him about our inability to get in touch with Joseph. Okay, so you believe that you received those checks on the 8th? Monday or Tuesday. Or the next Tuesday. Okay. Now, you indicated that you believe something looked different or off in these checks. Do you recall that? Yes, the signature. So just pulling one of the other checks that you had received, 4155 that you received on January 22nd with mm -hmm. check number 4236 mm -hmm. that you received sometime after February 8th. You had had occasion to receive multiple checks from Joseph in the past. Is that correct? Right. I was the one that was processing them, yes. And so when you received this check, it looked different to you. Is that right? Right. The signature struck me. Okay. And then... Moving to the next check that you had also received, check number 4238. Did you notice something different in terms of this check as well? The signature also. Now, in looking at the previous checks that you had actually received from Joseph, um, and I believe that you testified about this as well, that Joseph appeared to be pretty conscientious with respect to his business, right? Well, in what manner? That he would return our calls and such? No, we, I, we, when you had been testifying prior to lunch, mm -hmm. I, I, we were asking, I was asking you about what type of a person Joseph was and if he was laid back. And right. I, I believe that you said he was laid back, but he also appeared to be conscientious. Do you recall that? I don't recall saying conscientious, but I would say he was involved in the business. Okay. Yeah. I, I may have misstated it. Yeah. So you believe he was involved in the business? Right. And when you looked through the checks that I had provided you and the ones that we went through in Exhibit 420C, there was always a memo on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Do you recall that? And, mm -hmm. and that is that memo there so that you can credit, credit to the correct job that you are receiving payment for? Uh, yes, but that would be a memo that Joseph would put on the check. Right, but in that yes, it, and it would be an indication, an indicator of which project was being paid for. Okay, and that's important to you as a, as somebody who's taking care of the books, right? Correct. Okay, and so when we looked at these last two exhibits that you received checks for, going back to them, um, mm -hmm. 420D first. The memo is miscellaneous manufacturer. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Would you know what uh, account or job that actually applied to? Not now. Maybe at the time I would have, but not now. Okay. You indicated that you were working on a couple of jobs at that point, though, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And unless Chase told you, would you have any specific knowledge as to which job that would go to? I might have. I know we're working on a project for Paul Mitchell and something in Dubai or Saudi Arabia, somewhere like that. So it would probably apply to either of those projects. But in looking at the past checks in Exhibit 420C that you have looked at previously, You get pretty specific with, or he gets pretty specific with, well, this one doesn't have a job, but would you agree that? Uh, yes, the, the, the memo was okay. oh. Sure. From your recollection of the checks that you had received from Joseph previously, would he typically be specific about which job? Yes. Now, when you received these checks and you indicated that you had concerns about them and you talked to Dave Cicada, is that right? Yes. What exactly did you say to Dave? I 
you know, I said, here's pain, here's the pain. I mean, I don't know exactly what I said, but I did raise the point that I thought that the signatures looked odd or different. Did you mention that to the defendant at all? I don't believe I did. Okay. At the time when you were working for Metro Sheet Metal, um, were there some financial issues that had been going on with the company? Uh, you mean dur my, during the duration of my term there, of my employment there? Or yeah, when, when, Chase, was, uh, when, Chase, when Chase and Joseph were working with Metro Sheet Metal, mm -hmm. um, were there some potential or some financial issues with Metro Sheet Metal? Prior to them, prior to the project, yes, things were slow. It was around 2008 after the, you know, the financial breakdown, you know, meltdown, and they were struggling. And so when Dave was contacted about Chase, and they met, and I guess Joseph, well, that's right. Um, they started working together okay. and in hopes of bringing the business back to where it had once been. Would you, um, when you would receive checks for deposit, whether from Metro Sheet Metal or another company, would you typically deposit them pretty quickly? Yes, within, well, within a couple of days. Okay. With respect to these last two checks that you received from Metro <coughs> Sheet Metal and the concerns that you had, with respect to the signature, did you hold on to these checks for a period of time before they were actually deposited? I don't recall. I don't, if, know, how long I don't know how long that would have been. If you look at the bottom of this particular check, 4236, do you mm -hmm. see a posting date there? Uh, of March 5th of 2010? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see how it works. Uh, yes. This witness here say you're on a no foundation. Oh, well, she can review that to see us back before she threw out the election. Not for the truth of the matter that it was posted on that date. So does that refresh your recollection at all about holding on to the checks for a period of time before cashing them? Mm, yes. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't recall exactly um, because you, more often than not, Dave made the deposits. Um, so he sometimes held on to checks longer than I felt was necessary. Um, so this could well have been, um, you know, held on for a couple of weeks. And that would have been after the conversation you had with him, if you know. I'm sorry. Objection is speculation based on the wording around. Would that have been, when you received these checks on the 8th or the 9th, did you immediately or very soon thereafter talk to Dave about your concerns with respect to those checks? Yes, I think it was a few days after, you know, or within a few days, I should say. Do you recall or do you know of any conversations that were had with the defendant about actually cashing those checks? With myself? Either yourself or were you present when any conversations were had with the defendant about cashing those checks? I don't recall that. Okay. After the McStay family uh, went missing mm -hmm. and you indicated you had a conversation with the defendant about that on the 8th, did the defendant continue to work for Metro Sheet Metal? Uh, you know, the state's the evidence. You spoke to the defendant on February 8th, is that right? It's the best of my recollection that day, either Monday or Tuesday, but I'm almost certain it was Monday. How long did the defendant work at Metro Sheet Metal after that conversation occurred? For a good while, because I, that was February of 2010, and I left in February of 2011, and he was still there. Okay. Think he was still working there at that time? He, yes, he was there for a time working to complete the projects that we still had outstanding. If, and if those projects had been completed by summertime, do you know if he continued working there meeting. after that? Overruled. Overruled. 
Could you repeat that, please? Sure. If those projects had actually been completed by summer of 2010, do you recall if the defendants continued working there after those projects were completed? I believe he was coming in and out. I don't know what he was, I can't recall what he was working on, but I think he still maintained a relationship with Dave. Um, you had testified previously that you weren't aware of the defendant working on any projects outside of what was being done by Earth Inspired Products. Is that right? The states are testing. When the defendant was working for Metro Sheet Metal, do you recall him working on any other projects or doing any outside projects besides those that he was doing for Earth Inspired Products? He might have. He talked about having a lot of things going, so he, he may have been. Okay. After the next day family went missing, um, was there some issues with respect to Metro Sheet Metal actually receiving payment for the work that they had done? Um, uh, Joseph and Steve's mother and brother and Chase and Dave and Joe got together to discuss um, final payment on those projects, that once those projects were delivered, that he would get payment. To your knowledge, did he ever receive any payment? Did he, he ever receive any payment? Dave Cicada, Metro Sheet Metal. He did. Do you know who he received payment from? I think that it was from Kavanaugh. I have nothing further at this time. Cross? Thank you. Good afternoon, Hello. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, ask you about the, um, that's what I'm talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. So, to your knowledge, had Metro Sheet Metal ever worked on waterfalls or water fountains or water features prior to um, doing business with uh, Chase and Joseph? Not that I know of, no. Okay. And when you were working there, did you get an opportunity to see some of the waterfalls as they were being built? Yes. And how about when they finished them? Prior to them being created and removed, yes. Okay. So they, to your knowledge, the waterfalls themselves would get finished and you'd see a, a kind of a big waterfall, right? So, well, they varied in size, but yes. And then, and then, do you remember whether or not a video was taken of the waterfall to send to the customer before they were created? There, yes. Do you know who would have done the video of these waterfalls if you know? I, I could guess, but I, I'm not certain. Okay. And then once the video was taken, it would be, the waterfall would be created, is that correct? Yes. Did the creating of the waterfall require the waterfall to kind of be taken apart from, so that you could put it in the crates? If you, if you know. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as a 798. You can recognize this uh, photograph. And then I'll publish it on the screen if you recognize it. Um, I don't recognize what project this was, but this is very similar to some of the projects we were walking, working on. As a, as a waterfall? Yes. Okay. Um, by looking at that, you can't tell if that exact one was built at your facility, but you recognize that as, as a waterfall that... Yeah. The type of waterfall that they that typically Chase and, and Dave would would uh, build. It does this stone part. I don't recognize this, but the the outside, the patina and all of that, I do. But I do know that Chase was working on water fountains before he came to work with Dave. So right. it could well be from that time. Now, this outer portion that you described, that would be the portion that uh, Metro Sheet Metal would do. Is that correct? Yeah, they would do the metal work. Yes. Okay. If, if we could uh, show that to the jury. I'd object to the foundation with respect to this particular photograph. Mm -hmm.
oriented to what's the right side up and so forth. If you can just point to the to the top of the waterfall. And, uh, Me? Point to the top? Yes, is there, is there a, a marker or a... I have no way to really tell because okay. I don't know if the waterfall is laying down because it looks like the person is standing up. Okay. Well, what about the portion that you would, uh, that metal sheet metal would typically do? This part right here? Here. Please. And do it on the okay. Sorry. What am I pressing the the silver button in the middle? Oh I see it. Okay. Yeah, this this is the metal work that we would be doing. Okay. And that starts out, it looks it looks like it has a, a, a color to it and so forth, but it starts out as stainless steel, correct? Correct. And then it's turned into a final product like that, is that correct? Yes. Now you mentioned that uh, on these waterfalls that Chase would do the art the art part of it or the creative part of it, is that correct? Right. So the creative part of this would be, just in looking at it, would be kind of the stone, is that correct. right? And no, the, Jack, she didn't even testify that this was one of the, the ones they did. So the, the stone part would be that creative part that Chase would do and Metro Sheet Metal would not have been correct? Um, yeah, he would do the patinaing and the lighting and the... I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know, I don't remember rocks and that kind of stone being done in the shop, but... What about the But patina? the outside part, yes, he would do that kind of... Can you explain what the patina is? I don't know, he would put something on the metal and rub it and it would create that effect. Like we see in this yes. photo? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. And what about the plumbing part of it? Because obviously the waterfall will eventually have water running mm -hmm. through it, correct? Yes. And who would do that? I think Chase would do it, but I'm not sure Chase they... Calls for speculation. Okay. Well, well, he would oh, do, oh, he oh, would do the plumbing. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. So, but your, your, as far as you know, your company's portion was to do the stainless steel of the, the stainless steel part of it, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and then when the, 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 the waterfall got crated, mm -hmm. who would then, you know it would get shipped to a, a customer, correct? Correct. And who would, as far as you know, who would install it at the customer's location? I think the customer. Customer, that was your understanding? I know that that big project at the end, Chase went out of the country to install that one, or at least that's what I understood. Objection, okay. Lax Foundation. Oh, we will be answering you. And the other, the other waterfalls that you did with, with uh, Chase and Joseph, when they got installed, is it your testimony that you don't know who installed them, or...? Right, I don't know who installed them. Okay. Um, when Chase started uh, coming to the shop, mm -hmm. the metal sheet metal shop, uh, he testified that he could come and go, right, as he basically saw fit, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether or not he had a key? He was given a key to the facility. I believe he was. I've, I've been thinking about that, and I believe he, he did have a key. I know just, uh, uh, you were interviewed back in uh, 2000, September of 2014 by, um, actually, this detective, or he's a sergeant now, but this mm -hmm. detective was one of them, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to just show you page 15 on the issue of whether you were given a key, or whether Chase was given a key or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you recall what you told the detective? No, that he gave him a key. That mm -hmm. Dave gave him a key? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as far as you knew, at that time when you were interviewed, uh, Chase was actually given a key to the facility, mm -hmm. and he could go and come as he pleased? I believe so, yes. Okay. Which, when Chase was there, when he came to the shop, would he typically arrive early in the morning? Or was there, did he have kind of set hours? Or would he just come and go um, because he was doing various things? I think he was, it wasn't at a set time, no. Okay. 
I mean, he didn't clock in and out. Okay. Um, you were all probably one of the first people there, right? Actually, no. The fabricators were. They would get there at 7 a.m. I would get there at 8. Okay. And would you recall getting there and never seeing Chase when you got there? Yeah, there'd be some times when he'd be coming in, but I don't know if he had been there before earlier or not, but he, I'd be sitting at my desk and he would come in. There. When he did come, uh, when he was there, did he often stay there the entire day, or would he leave, come back, that kind of thing? My recollection is that he would come and go. Okay. Often, when he, when Chase came... Because he would be going to get lights from Home Depot or something, or, you know, but I, I can't really say that I recall him being there the duration of the day, like a work day. Um, because he would go by parts, or he would go by pumps and things of that nature? Right. Okay. And, and whatever else he was, I mean, I wasn't really privy to what he was doing when he was out. And Dave Sr. Mm -hmm. uh, would often do a lot of the stainless steel work himself, is that correct? Yes. And Dave actually worked on the um, waterfalls that were for Joseph, as you understood, is that correct? Yes. And his son uh, worked, also worked there, is that correct? At yes. At that time period? Mm -hmm. And to your knowledge, did he work on the uh, Joseph waterfalls? Or did he work on the other metro sheet metal business that you guys were doing? Probably both. Okay, but you don't know for sure? No, I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, now, at the time that Joseph went missing, mm -hmm. there was you said two projects that were outstanding, correct? Mm -hmm. And that was the Saudi Arabia job that you understood? Or Dubai or something, yeah, somewhere in the Middle East. Okay. And then there was a... Paul Mitchell from Florida, into Florida, I believe. And those were two kind of big jobs, correct? Correct. Plus, I believe we were also working on a project that had been damaged in the delivery. And Joseph had asked Dave if he would... Um, remake it, and that when he received the insurance, he would pay Dave the money that, uh, that was due. So it might have been three projects. And that, 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 uh, one, that one project that you just described where Joseph said, if you could rebuild it, Dave, I will pay you when I get the insurance proceeds, correct? Correct. That was, you recall that being the T. Junker uh, account? I don't remember the name on that account. Okay. Now, that issue regarding the insurance check, was that one of the issues that you recall Dave being very upset with Joseph about? Um, no, I think he was upset can after... Can you respond? I'm sorry? Non-responsive. Oh, um, I don't think at the time he was upset with him, but I think later when the, he didn't get payment, he was upset. And do you recall um, if Joseph or if, if Dave Sr. ever had a conversation with Joseph about not getting paid? Objection, Dave. I'm not certain about that. When you were interviewed by the detectives, one of them being Sergeant Smith is sitting in the courtroom today. You recall telling them about this uh, communication uh, you had on February 8th, which would be that Monday. Mm -hmm. you remember telling them about that? A conversation with who? With Chase. Yes. Okay. And you specifically uh, told them that you you um, that Chase had come in on that Monday, which would be the eighth, correct? Right. So Chase came into the Metro Sheet Metal uh, facility on Monday the eighth. Correct. Okay. 
and you in, you inquired uh, of Mr. Uh, Merritt, Chase Merritt, mm -hmm. as to the we have whereabouts. about, about yeah. the whereabouts of Joseph that you had been trying to get in touch with him and you hadn't received a reply. Correct. Okay. And you had told uh, Detective Smith at the time that Chase was actually at your facility when you told him that. He had come in physically, correct? Yes. Okay. And do you recall when, when uh, Chase came into the shop that Monday? Any more time? Yeah. No, I can't. Not right now. I can't recall. Maybe, well, maybe 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. But it would, 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 to the best of your recollection, would it have been in the morning? Objection, speculation. I don't have a memory of that, no. Well, he didn't come in in the evening. No. The best you know, right? No, not okay. evening, no. Okay. So, do you know how long uh, Chase was at the Metro Sheet Metal facility on that Monday? Not really. I remember he was sitting down talking to me, and we had some chairs there in the office area, and we were just sort of chatting about, you know, Joseph, not us not being able to get in touch with Joseph. Okay. But I don't recall him. I mean, at one point, I imagine he must have gotten up and left, but I don't know if he left the building or he went into the back area. Well, you had the two projects still that needed to get done, correct? Yes. And as far as you knew, there was a lot of work to be done in a very short amount of time, correct, on those projects? I don't remember what that window was, but I mean, we were working to get them completed, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Now, do you recall talking to Detective Smith that, wait a minute, that the 8th was the day that the trooper was found at the border? Did you talk to Detective Smith about that? I had no idea. The trooper the vehicle you yes. I had no idea it was missing. So you didn't talk to the detective about that? I don't, I mean, I might have learned about it later, but not that day, on the 8th. Because when you talked to the detective, you guys were talking about events that occurred four, year, four and a half years prior, correct? Right. And I definitely, at that point, did not know that there was a vehicle missing. I didn't even know if the, I didn't even know the eighth the family was missing, other than he wasn't responding to our calls. But you knew it when you talked to Detective Smith. In oh, yeah, and yes, yes. So, so okay. So now that refreshes your memory as to kind of the time issue. You're being interviewed in 2014 in mm -hmm. September, correct? Yes. When Detective Smith and the other detective were interviewing you, they're bringing you back to 2010. Okay, yeah. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And they asked you about the 4th, the 5th, they asked you about the 8th, when you told them that Chase went into the uh, uh, facility of Metro Sheet Metal, correct? Right, with the chest. Okay. Yeah. And it, did you recall talking to Detective Smith about, or Detective Smith telling you that the, the um, that the the vehicle that belonged to the McStay family mm -hmm. was found at the border on the 8th. Do you recall that? I don't. That he said that to me? Do you recall that? No, I don't recall him saying that to me. He, but that doesn't mean he didn't. <laughs> now, you mentioned Dan Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. Just at the end of your testimony on, on direct. Mm -hmm. So, is that a yes? Yes, I'm okay. sorry. All right. Um, is Dan Kavanaugh somebody that you ever met? No. But you knew of him, right? Yes. And you knew of him because um, there was a conversation between Dan Kavanaugh and Dave Sr. that you were aware of. Is that correct? Yes. And it was more of an um, argument than it was a conversation, correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, well, were you present for that conversation? Well, I was in the adjacent office. Okay. And you, and you heard Dave getting very upset with Dan Kavanaugh on the phone, is that correct? Yes. And do you know what that was in regards to? I believe it was for payment for that Dubai, pro one of the projects. It was financial. It was financial. 
And do you recall whether or not Dan Kavanaugh was getting upset with Dave? Or do you know what Mr. Kavanaugh was, uh, what his position was in that? Objection, hearsay. Sustained and also calls for speculation or conclusion. Unless it was on the speaker for which you could hear both ends of the conversation. No, it was on the speaker phone. Okay. Did, did Dave talk to you about that conversation after he had it? I believe he did, yes. And was that conversation with Dan Kavanaugh after the family went missing, after Joseph went missing, or was it before? I don't think we had any contact with, well, I would say it was after the family's missing, after the completion of that project, which we completed while the family was missing. Do you recall ever having a, con or, or do you recall a phone call that Dan Kavanaugh made to Metro Sheet Metal inquiring who you guys were and what your relationship was with Joseph prior to Joseph going missing? Objection, hearsay. Oh, well, it should be answered. No, I'm not, I'm not aware. I don't have that conversation anymore. How long was it that you remember uh, Chase being there working at, the, uh, at your facility? Yeah. I think he came in... Well, let's see, Joseph went missing in February 10, so it must have been 2009 sometime. So he was there maybe two years or something like that? No, no, not that long. Um, he might, I think he came sometime in 2009, so it would have been only a year or so. But you, you answered on direct that he, even after the family went missing, that he would come and you remember it, even it's 2011 perhaps. At least that was your testimony on direct. Uh, yes, that he would come in and um, I don't know if he was working on projects or he was just, I'm not sure what he was doing there, but he would come in. Okay. Now, the checks that uh, counsel showed you, uh, she, she, uh, so she showed you some handwritten checks and then she showed you some typewritten checks, correct? I don't have a computer, yes. Okay. So at some point, you were receiving handwritten checks, and then at some point, it switched to typewritten checks. Is that the way you remember it? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And um, do you recall when that kind of switch was made? No, okay. I don't recall. I'm just going to show you um, the exhibit here. Let me just show you 420C again. And I'll, I'll, you can look, what it, look at whatever you want and then you can flip through them. And... Well, it looks like it, uh, it's got question Does it, you, you said you remember that there was kind of a switch from handwritten to typewritten. Mm -hmm. I asked you if you remembered when that switch occurred, and uh, you did not remember. So I, I brought you the checks that counsel showed you in Exhibit 420C to see if that refreshes your memory as to when that switch kind of took place. Yeah, it looks like it was um, December of 2009. Okay. So predominantly, as of December 2009, what checks you did get were typewritten predominantly as opposed to handwritten. Does that yeah, sound yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, there are some here in December of 2009 that are handwritten, too. Right, that's why I said predominantly. Yeah, predominantly, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And you said that typically you would get checks by mail, is that right? Both. And, and Delivered by Chase and also by mail. Okay. And you wouldn't know if I showed you any particular check, whether Chase brought it in or you got it by mail? No, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Okay. But there would be, um, th there wouldn't be any mark on the check that you would make that would say Chase brought it in or we got it by mail or anything like that. Not on the check, no. It might have been in the, in the notes, in the files, but not on the check. 
Now, each one of your um, projects had a separate file, is that correct? Yes. And you described to the detectives when they interviewed you that when a check came in, you would kind of staple it to the invoice. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, the but, copy of the check. Yeah. Sorry. Copy, the check goes in the bank, right? Yeah. Okay, and then the copy would be stapled to the invoice, mm -hmm. and it would be put into the to the file. Right. And do you recall? And we used QuickBooks, so you know, as the check came in, we would log it in, and it would you know show paid on the on the uh, on the software for the QuickBooks. Okay, so it was all recorded, correct? Mm -hmm. Now the detectives, do you recall them asking you for the, those files? They could look at those files. Yeah, I believe they did. And this was the day that not only you were interviewed, but Dave Senior and Dave Junior were interviewed that same day. Yes. Right. Yes. All three, all three of you, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you recall the detectives telling you, or a detective telling you, to gather up the, that material so that they could take it? Objection Foundation. Oh, I don't recall. Do you recall whether or not Dave gave you instructions to gather up that material to give to the detectives? I don't recall that. Okay. I think I might have looked in the file cabinets for those files, but I don't remember turning them over. Okay. Do you know whether or not Dave turned those over to the detectives? During that visit? Yes. That I don't know. How about he was being interviewed separately. Okay. But how about after the interview was over? Do you recall ever participating in giving the documents to the detectives? As far as, no, not, not me personally, no. Okay. Uh, do you recall if, if Dave did that? Dave Senior? I would mean, foundation. I wouldn't know, because by 14, when we were interviewed, I was I was no longer with the company, not going in. I mean, I wasn't having any kind of contact. You were long gone, right? Two well, years. I was long gone from the right the business, yes. But as far as in front of you, Dave didn't turn over any no, documents. No, not as far as I know. Now, there was a a conversation that you also overheard between Joseph and Dave. Mm -hmm. regarding payment, is that correct? That was a, more of an argument than it was a conversation. Do you recall that? Uh, no. I don't know what conversation you're just talking about. the insurance check. Oh. I'm not sure that they had an argument. Um, I know there was discussion about him agreeing to, comp you know, to remake that, that, uh, that fountain. I don't remember it being an argument, no. Do you recall Dave Sr. being upset that he had not been paid from the insurance proceeds? Yes, as a matter of fact, I went to Orange County to file a small claims, in small claims court against the brother. That's Michael? Michael, yes. Because Dave was upset because he thought that Joseph had received the funds and did not give him the, his portion of that uh, insurance pro, of the insurance proceeds. Is that correct? Objection. Assumes facts, not an evidence. Just, hearsay. Just, Do you know why you, Dave and Joseph, or Dave and Joseph, had that conversation about the insurance check? Well, because the the unit had been delivered or damaged. Hearsay. Objection sustained. Also calls for speculation and conclusion. To your knowledge, did, did your company, Metro Sheet Metal, ever get paid for that insurance job? It's called the insurance job. Yeah, no. Okay. And was that the only job that Metro Sheet Metal did not get paid for? I believe so, yes. Everything else had been paid, correct? Yes. Nothing further. Anything else? Yeah. Joseph was missing at the time um, that that job had been completed. Is that correct? The insurance job you were referring to? Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to think. I know that when we did try to get the money from the insurance company, he was missing and that it had gone into the account. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. Was the defendant ever hurt or injured while he was working at Metro Sheet Metal? Hmm. 
Not that I recall. Do you recall telling the detective that he had not been injured in any way? Probably because I don't remember him being injured. Would it refresh your recollection to look at the portion of the report that you talked to the detective about with respect to that? Yes, that might help. Page 21, lines 17 through 20. So you don't recall any injuries that had occurred to the defendant while working, is that right? No. Yes. Now, when the defendant would be at the shop, would he carry his cell phone with him? Yes. And you would see him on his cell phone occasionally? Yes. And do you recall um, ever having any conversations with Dave Cicada, or him letting you know that there had been a problem with their bank account or Dave's credit card in February of 2010? With Mr. Shino, yes. um, bank account? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Okay. Now, you testified that you believed that the defendant went to Saudi Arabia. Do you recall that? Y yes. Now, did you, I aware the project was? Did you actually personally see him though? No. Were you just told that he went? Yes, I guess. So yes. you don't have any first-hand knowledge that he actually went to Saudi Arabia other than you were told that? Exactly. And the Metro Sheet Metal was located in what city? Azusa, California. And did you have, or did Metro Sheet Metal, Metal have any other locations that they worked at? No. With respect to the interview that you did in February, or in 2014 with Detective Smith, mm -hmm. where you were asked if you had gone into the files and, and pulled all these documents, you no longer had been employed by Metro Sheet Metal, correct? Right. And so, in terms of your knowledge of what they were doing with the files and things like that at that time, had you been keeping up on that? No, I've been gone already about over two years. On the 8th, when the defendant came into the shop, do you recall seeing him um, take any phone calls or make any phone calls? No, I don't. And as you sit here today, you indicated you don't recall what time you actually saw him that day? Yeah, I couldn't give you an exact time, no. Nothing further. I believe it was morning or afternoon? I believe it was morning. Okay. Maybe even mid-morning. Okay. Anything further? Uh, yeah, just briefly. Um, regarding um, counsel's questions about uh, Chase being on his phone. You remember telling the detective that he was on his phone a lot with Joseph. They talked a lot. They did. And that he that when asked about Chase, he said he's very friendly, very, a very friendly guy. He talked about his wife. He talked about his kids. He talked to Joseph on the phone. Do you recall telling them that? Objection. Counsel's reading from the transcript. Oh, could you repeat that? <laughs> sure. Uh, you recall being asked about, the detectives were asking you about Chase. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. What person he was, is that correct? Mm -hmm. and, you, and you remember telling them that he was very friendly, a very friendly guy. You know, he kind of talked about what he did, his wife, his kids, and Joseph. Objection relevance? Oh, we will. I, I might have, yeah, I did say that, yes, that he was a friendly guy and talked to me about his wife and his kids and, and all kinds of, um, just other matters, you know, projects he had worked on in the past and that sort of thing. And that it appeared to you that Joseph and Chase were close because they talked, talked it on the telephone, or the cell phones? Yes, a lot, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Oh, 
yeah. Uh, well, we want, uh, Jim likes to write on the, on the calendar. We're going to let him write on the calendar <laughs> on one last question. You said, you said mid-morning on the 8th, is that correct? I'm Your best to guess. Okay. So, do you mind if we put mid-morning where it says... Um, Objection, speculation. Uh, February 8th? <laughs> we can't let Jim be without his fun with... At Metro, what's it Metro? Yeah. Mid morning? That sound right? That's to my re recollection, yes. Sometime that day, but I think it was in the morning. So, okay. Well, we didn't need a novel, but okay. We'll take what? it. Right. So, uh, it says here Carmen Garcia saw Chase at Metro mid morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a yes. Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Yeah, wait, please. So you indicated that you're not totally sure that you saw him mid morning that day. Is that right? Yeah, I'm not totally sure. That. So we'll just make sure that this is accurate and put I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> because you're not totally sure. Is that correct? That's correct. I couldn't say what time it was. And you just testified that <coughs> Chase appeared to be a friendly guy and things like that. Do you recall that? Yes. But you yourself were uncomfortable around him, right? Later I did become quite uncomfortable around him, yes. Nothing further. Any objection to uh, Mr. Garcia being excused? No. no. Okay, thank you for your attendance and you are excused. And we'll go ahead and take our afternoon recess this time in 15 minutes. Keep in mind uh, the admonitions previously given to you, not to form or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case, and we'll see everyone back in about 15 minutes.